This video is a recap of my 10 favorite wood related projects that I built in 2020. Here we go. I started the year by building a plywood sink because my shop sink was broken and this is a perfect project if you are like me and you cannot throw away scrap plywood. I keep collecting it and I keep it for years and years and years and at the end of the day it still ends up in the fire eventually. So this time I decided to do something with all of the scrap wood and decided to make it into a wooden sink. The build is relatively easy. You just need a lot of glue, a lot of patience and a bunch of clamps and then finish it all with epoxy. And I have to say, I am not a big epoxy fan. It just smells weird. It's too plasticky. The fiberglass mat was not the nicest thing to work with. But in this case, it did the job. It's completely and 100% waterproof and I think it looks pretty cool too. If I were to redo this project, I would see and see the bottom part of the sink a little bit so it's easier for the water to just flow into the pipe. Sometimes I have to push it with my hands because it's too flat. But it's a really cool project and definitely a conversation piece. The bookshelf chair is definitely one of my favorite ideas I would say in 2020 because I think it is actually um, a cool space that we could take more advantage of. The chair itself like under the seating area why do we not take advantage of this space it's a really cool storage opportunity and in this case I decided to build it completely on a CNC machine which is so far out of my comfort zone. I'm not good with computers I'm not good with CNC but I built a prototype and based off of the learnings of that prototype, I made some files and then I cut it on my CNC. And to be 100% honest, I forgot to hire the armrest. So in the prototype, I realized they are too low. And here you can see, like I didn't take, I, I just forgot to, to change that. Still, I think it's a pretty cool chair. Um, it's not the most comfortable chair in the world, to be honest, but it looks good and it was a good experience building it, especially because it was on the CNC. And building a second version that's improved and maybe making plans or sharing the files is definitely something that I have way, way up on my list for 2021. The record cabinet. This is 100% in the top five of my favorite projects in 2020. I've been collecting and listening to records for, I don't even know, a long, long time. <laughs> um, and it's storing vinyl is a tricky task because vinyl itself is a very beautiful object. But if you have, let's say 200 of them, it's very heavy, very bulky and it's very hard to store that. So I've been thinking about the perfect record player ca cabinet for probably like 12 years or something. And finally this year I had a good idea where I combine the best of both worlds, where I combine deep storage, which are the bottom three, three uh, compartments, and also two flip through storages where I have the most recently played records I can just flip through them like in a record store and it also looks nice. It takes the weight off of the deep storage part and especially hiding the speakers behind the gray fabric was a really cool idea. I think I love this thing. My new screw storage system. It's very hard to say, but also very, very useful for my shop. I decided to update my old system and this is definitely a video that's uh, worth checking out if you're into storing and um, organizing your supplies because there's a lot of thinking that went into, into the whole concept. But just to cut it short, I decided to update the tobacco boxes where I kept my screws in to Thanos boxes for a couple of reasons. And the main reason is that um, they have these interchangeable T-lock closures and now I can color code each box. So if I know I'm looking for wood screws, I know to go for the, uh, for the boxes with the red T-lock closure. And that alone was worth building all of these cabinets and updating my system. This is so easy and so useful. All right, yeah, very, very simple bed. This is definitely in the top five of my favorite projects in 2020 because it's so useful, it's so quick to build and it's actually very, very simple. Um, and the design is good. Designing beds is, again, like with the record cabinet, it's not trivial because it's a very bulky and big object. 
And this is, it looks delicate, it's light, it's easy to build, and it's so easy to move with this. You can take it apart without tools, basically. And that's what I really like about this concept and about the design of this bed. It looks cool, and depending on your skill set and on your tools, you can make this even simpler. You can, yeah, you could probably build this with a track saw and a drill. So, yeah, even though this looks quite elaborate, if you look into it, it is actually a very simple build. And uh, if you need a bed, this is something that I would highly recommend just thinking about because the system is, is pretty much, yeah, as simple as it gets. You just put it together without tools and without hardware. And yes, of course, I have a shot of Smudo, not in focus, but still it's Smudo. So that's good enough, right? All right, the sofa bed. I am so proud of this build. Um, it's not a beginner's project. It was pretty tricky to figure out the mechanics and all the moving parts and how it all comes together. And to be honest with you, I don't really remember how I did it. <laughs> That's why I'm glad I made a video um, just to document how it all works. Because if I had to build it again without watching the video first, I, I would probably not be able to. <laughs> this was very complicated. But in these a uh, little bit overwhelming builds where I'm not really sure if I can do it or not, I usually start with the easy things and the starts uh, and the things where I know how to do them. And then I leave the trickiest part right until the end where I cannot procrastinate any longer. And then I tackle that and it worked out fine. Actually, it worked out more than fine. I'm really pleased with this. This is a cool build. Um, but again, like it's not, it's maybe not a beginner's project or maybe if you're a very brave beginner, this is the perfect project for you just to corner yourself into a difficult build. I can promise you, you will learn a lot about geometry and folding stuff and keep in mind, like that's the biggest trick of this video is the ratchet strap hinge. That is such a easy and simple way to build a hinge. It's really cool. And speaking of hinge, this is my hinge table. This is basically a prototype because I had the idea inspired by an actual metal hinge to build a table that looks like a hinge and that works like a hinge. But that's all, uh, at least the tabletop is all wood and, and almost no um, like mechanical fasteners. We have some staples, we have some screws, but the, the hinging turning point stuff, that's all made with wood and this is this is a project where it's basically me sketching in 3D. I had no idea how this would work. I only had a rough, very rough vision for how it's going to look. And that was just me filming myself while I'm 3D sketching <laughs> and thinking with my hands. Um, this is a really cool concept. Again, it's a prototype. This is not a fin, like I wouldn't, I wouldn't sell that. <laughs> But I think the idea is pretty cool and maybe it will lead to something else. I don't know. And here is another table. It's the folding table and the idea is roughly the same. I had the idea to make a folding table that is all wood without any metal hinges. So I would use the wood itself as a hinge. And there's a difference to the hinge table that I that we had before this one because the hinge this time is a little bit more delicate, a little bit, I think it's a little bit more clever even. It's very, very useful. And again, this is me enjoying my work, thinking with my hands in my shop and just being, being 3D sketching um, in real life, <laughs> if that makes sense. Um, the, the table is pretty cool though. We took it on a camping trip and it works great. It's, it's surprisingly stable. The magnets hold the legs in place. This is definitely a beginner's project. You can build this with very simple tools. You can make it even simpler than this one. But the idea to have the hinge built like this is really inspiring, I think. The home office desk was definitely inspired, of course, by the coronavirus. When it hit and the lockdown started, I was thinking, okay, man, all these people have to work from home now. What would be the perfect home office desk? Um, because I know myself, if I'm on a desk 10 minutes later after me sitting down, it's cluttered with stuff. So I came up with the idea of a table that kind of has this hidden compartment. So you can um, open up the tabletop and then store stuff inside. The, the whole underside of the table is built from plywood. 
and then the tabletop just screws onto it and it gives you this nice big compartment that's hidden by the lid and uh, it looks clean, it looks nice, but if you have to work, you can open the lid, get all your office, office stuff out of there, get your iPad, and then also use the lid as a, um, I don't know what the word for this is, but like, like a stand. So you can put your iPad there um, and have a Zoom call and all of these things. So that was my first reaction to the coronavirus and I, I, kinda, I kinda really like it. It's actually my, my dining table in my studio now. This is probably the idea or the rough concept that I'm the proudest of <laughs> in all of 2020 because this idea, I don't know, I have never seen it anywhere and also in the comments of the video, I haven't heard anybody talk about this or, you know, sent me a link to somebody else who's done it. So this is something that I'm, yeah, I, I feel strongly about this because the idea is so simple and it works really, really well. So if you are into uh, building with solid wood and tabletop glue ups, it's definitely worth checking out the whole video. I don't want to explain it in detail. You can see it roughly what I'm doing here. I'm basically stacking two pieces of um, two pieces of slabs or two slabs over on top of each other. And then with one cut on the bandsaw, it kind of cuts both slabs at the same time and gives this perfect joint. Uh, almost like you're you're doing wallpaper. You use the same technique on wallpaper, but I haven't seen anybody do it with a tabletop. And to um, and to even it all out, I use this uh, router slat. It is a little bit time consuming, but to be honest, I'm not sure if it's if it's more time consuming than the traditional um, the traditional way of just putting it through a planer. I don't know. You have to try it for yourself. I definitely like my lazy sanding jig there and I was very, very happy with how the glue up looks because the lines are so organic and it just looks so nice. Um, and you only notice when you know. People who don't know woodworking, they will probably don't notice, but I, I really like this. And that's it. Thank you for watching the recap of my 10 favorite wood related projects in 2020. I'm also making another video, it's probably out on Wednesday, with my 10 favorite metal related projects in 2020. That is mostly about recycling stuff, also pretty cool things, pretty cool ideas. It's really nice for me to make these recaps just to remind myself of how much stuff I did. And it also inspires me to go back to the shop and do even more. And I hope it inspires you as well. Maybe you're looking for some project ideas. Maybe you just need a little bit of visual inspiration. I hope these videos do something for you. Either way, thank you for watching. And please let me know in the comments what was your favorite wood-related project that I built in 2020. All right. Thank you for watching. And I will see you next week or next Wednesday with a new recap. Bye.